Hello, I am Deborah Mado and I welcome you to Share and Inspire, where we provide you with inspirational solutions to your situations. Now, if you're visiting this channel for the very first time or you're a regular visitor but you're yet to subscribe, maybe because you think there is a subscription fee attached or you think that some amount of money will be deducted from your account when you subscribe. Well, I'm here to let you know the truth, which is that there is no such thing as subscription fee. All you need to do is click on that subscribe button below showing subscribe and you would have subscribed to our channel. Well, we need you to subscribe to our channel so you help our channel grow just as we help you grow. So kindly click on that subscribe button now because subscription is free. Share and inspire. True stories, real people. My name is Amara Chuku Amikabu Dennis. I am from Eziafo, Ohafia, in Ohafia local government, in a state called Abia, God's own state. I grew up to be the first in a family of six, three boys and three girls. It was fun to grow up uh, having parents who are godly, parents who wanted the best for their children. At the first, amongst the uh, six soldiers, I soon realized that um, I had a lot to do because I was more of a role model to my younger siblings. So life was very beautiful. Life was such that you, at the snap of a finger, whatever you wanted, daddy and mommy, they were always there to provide. Daddy was uh, a Seventh-day Adventist church elder, was also a choir director that he did for over uh, 25 years. And uh, my first experience in the choir was when I was six. At six, he took me to the choir and my voice was very bad. But that's a story for next time. So, um, my dad was a businessman. And um, as a businessman, he had a lot of clients from all over the country. He was not just a businessman, but he was a registered businessman with um, during the change of Nigeria. So he was into uh, exchange of uh, foreign currencies. So one day, we went to church. And then um, there was no... Uh, phones as frequent as what we have now. So someone uh, used the bike, came to the church and informed my dad that um, his office was looted. It's not quite strange because um, the street where the office was situated was a very busy street. In fact, I remember uh, the street is called Marina Road in Oran, Akron State. So he was not only into exchange uh, business, he was also into selling of grade one uh, clothes uh, that, were, that were being imported from wherever. So by the time he came to the, the shop, he discovered that um, his goods, uh, bells of uh, what we call okrika, more than three or four bells were taken away. By who? He didn't know. But before this time, uh, due to the fact that the business was booming very well, he, my my cousin, my cousin was uh, always in charge of most of the activities. So one day, I recall as a young boy, we had a lot of customers in the uh, office. So my dad uh, opted that my cousin uh, sleeps over in the office so that we could have enough room in the house for him to sleep over. And then, incidentally too, uh, one of our, our townsmen 
came to visit. He was actually uh, on transit to Gabon. So when he came, mom didn't want to do, dad didn't want to do, except that he should join my cousin in the office. My cousin sleeps very well. He sleeps such that you can carry him from his bed outside, he wouldn't even know. So while he was sleeping, the young man that slept with him in the office took the keys to the drawer, opened the drawer, and made a way with, um, to be very considerate, more than four million naira. Then, this is um, 1994 and 95. So, that money got missing and uh, say 70% of that money was not my father's money. But of course, one who is into beauty the change, you will go get money from various sources, his friends, to take off his business uh, client and then he will now go back to Aba or to the bank and then make uh, exchange. So, about four million naira went down the drain and uh, the young man had gone to Gabon so fast forward the date back to this day. Um, so finally we discovered that it was one of the boys whose uh, brother was also in, uh, in the same line of business with my dad. He made away with this material. So you know, my dad being a peace loving person, I didn't want to involve the police. He wanted a Christian approach to the problem being solved. So they cut the long story short. Um, the business crumbled from 100% to 10. So people who were used to having excess of food to eat, were used to giving out to so many persons, were now left to feed from the crumbles that fell from whichever term. I remember that my SS2 school fees at uh, Science College, Oran, um, was paid by someone who was afraid of my dad. And in fact, my Wayek fee for SS3 in 1999 was paid by someone. That's how bad it was. So bad that he can't afford the school fees for the children. It was difficult to even eat, and um, my mom had to resolve to. Of course, she did catering, so the skills were still there. She resolved into making uh, cakes, uh, egg rolls, fish pie, meat pie, um, and the likes. So, as a young man, between 2000 and sorry, 1997, I had hawked all manner of things to keep the family going. Um, things like I had hawked akara as bean cake, I had hawked bread, I've hawked gari, <laughs> I've hawked mineral as soft drinks, I've hawked uh, bones, egg roll, name them. But for me it was fun, you know, to do things to also add your own hand to make the family work. So one of those days, I think in 1998, uh, a few of my dad's friends came from Cameroon. There was a need for him to change their uh, CFA, CFA, to Nigerian currency. So he took the money from them and he was to travel to Abad the following day. After having the normal morning prayer at home, the the car driver honed and um, my dad went out and we said bye-bye daddy, safe trip. And I know I told him daddy don't forget my bread, that was a special bread uh, whose um, wrap was pepper because it was top notch. So that's all I asked for. So my dad went down, he didn't lace his shoes because he was in haste, went into the car. So somehow. He stepped out of the car to lace his shoes. Then men of the underground world attacked him. And 
and um, until my father died, the scar from the sharp cutlass they used. They wanted to kill him. Uh, being uh, a retired army uh, guy, he fought the Vietnam War. So when one of them raised the machete to hit his head, so he put his hand, his left hand, and the machete went straight to his bones. A little flesh here is what held the thumb from falling off. And they were beating him, they pushed him to the water, just in front of our house. We didn't know. We were hearing people talking, scrubbles and so on, and we didn't know. Not until our neighbor opposite our house came out to eat himself. And he said, oh, what is it now? Leave me alone if you've taken his money. So the boys now ran and left my my half-dead dad. So when he came closer, ha, Elder, what is it? And he came knocking at our door and um, pff, the whole house, the whole compound, we were awake and shouts, cries and so on. And he was rushed to the hospital and God was kind enough and his life was spared. But you know, as a young person too, I had resolved in my mind not to be dependent on my father's wealth because I had believed that whatever wealth my dad had or had uh, was through his struggle. So it was my own turn as a young man to strive to make my own wealth myself. So after my uh, first uh, wake, 1999, I remember I left home. I was still around that environment, but I left my father's house to fend for myself. I got into mere jobs like, um, you know, Oran is uh, more of a fishing port. Uh, uh, dry fishes are being brought from Bakasi or wherever and then being uploaded at the wharf and then being transported to various places in Nigeria. So I was also involved in offloading of those basket of fishes, um, carrying off fuel on my shoulder in the jerry cans, doing some minor jobs to keep the weight and so on together. And while this was happening, I was also enjoying my football games, playing my soccer, and wishing that one day I would make my country proud, like Papilo. <laughs> but then, life uh, has a way of being kind or not being kind. So, since the wealth had gone down the drain, um, my dad was now involved in what we called the global mission evangelism of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. So, he was posted to a place called Ugep in Crossover State under the Yako local government. So that's where he passed out for a very long time and once or twice or so I had gone to visit him and just know how he's doing. It was quite fun. So fast forward the date and the year to 2003. He had left Kodiva State to Akwaibom to a place called Eket the oil city. So there he was also a pastor and um, I came visiting and um, finally had to stay with him because he was not with the whole family. So gradually I had a need to, to change my field of interest from sciences to arts. And I think that's when Neko came out nearly. So I said, okay, let me try my hand in Neko because I had I had so many news that it was very difficult, it was tough, it was this and that. So unconsciously, I told my dad that I will, I will try that. I, will, I want to squash the result. And so he, he trusted me and I registered in a, a school called CDA, Ikoiket, Comprehensive Development Agency Secondary School, Ikoiket. So <laughs> I went there, became a student teacher. 
of course, as one who has done work before, uh, 1999, and as one who has gotten experience in teaching, of course, after my school, I had to be teaching part-time in some schools to get experience. So, yeah, some teachers found that I was good enough in a lot of the subjects, so I became a hand for them. I taught English language. I taught biology. I taught agri science. Um, I taught chemistry. I taught further maths, which was my best subject then. All the the y, the x of the polynomials, and you know. <laughs> so finally, I wrote the YAC and I got my papers. And um, 2003. Uh, I got the call to come to Babcock because I was good at sports. So my mom told me that his uh, her, her brother, who works in Babcock, has asked me to come. That there's a, a job opening at the sports office. So I ah, I was excited. Babcock, here I come. So I got into the car, moved to Babcock. Unknown to me that where I dropped was not even Babcock. I dropped. In it's far, far, far from Babcock. But the good thing was that God was faithful. There were no arm robbers. And I dare say that God sent an angel to, to lead me. Because when I stopped at that finishing session, it was very lonely. So I sat there alone, praying. And uh, an old man came to me and said, what are you doing here? Esther, sorry, I'm actually going to Babcock in Elisha Oyama. But I think I made a mistake to stop here. I said, ah, he's a very dangerous place. You don't, you don't have to. Okay, come with me. So, with double mind, I had to follow him quietly and still praying. And he led me to a place. He said, St stand here. Just stay here for a while. A car will soon, or some cars will be passing by. Just flew one of the cars, drop somewhere, and then pick a, a car to Alicia. And um, when he left, I looked around the whole place, coming for him. I didn't see him, so I know that was God's angel. So finally, I got to the Babcock Gate, and uh, that was February. So I began the job on Sunday with a sports center. So I was, uh, I would say that I was amongst the the, the founding fathers of the sports center in Babcock. Uh, I had uh, uh, David Ayeni as a director, and I had uh, Mr. Ubina Uwojiba as uh, the sports coach. Then myself. God was so kind, I enrolled, I bought their form to start a uh, program in Babcock, and uh, bought the form, but I didn't know the course to choose because I was good at almost everything. The then bossa, uh, Dr. Professor Luke Ono has said, I'm good at computer sciences, I'm good at uh, computer engineering. And this one said I was good at being a pastor, this one said I was good at being uh, whatever, whatever. So, so but the cut, the long story short, um, I told God, I said, if you want me to be a pastor, as I get into school now, let someone I don't know call me pastor. And I was very sure that I, I, nobody would call me pastor. <laughs> so, as I dropped at the school gate, I still see that man till tomorrow morning. In fact, I saw him last week. So he said, ah, pastor, welcome. So I stood at the gate and I was crying. I said, who sent this kind of witch to come this morning to call me pastor? What did happen? So, <laughs> while I was sitting there crying, my boss now drove in and said, ah, are you fine, Dennis? Hop in, hop in. So I hopped in this car. I don't know, this is my experience. He said, if you want to be a pastor, be a pastor. But I have nothing to be into sports because you're very good. I picked the form, I, I filled the form, finally submitted, wrote the entering exam, scored the highest in the whole faculty of arts. It's quite impressive. So, did the oral interview. Then in Babcock, you do entrance exam and then a very serious oral interview. So I passed. But when the first list came out, my name was not there. Second list came out, my name was not there. All the lists came out, my name didn't appear anywhere. I said, ah, praise the Lord, though. 
Finally, I'm not going to be a pastor. And a uh, lot of persons made efforts to make sure that uh, my name appeared somewhere for theology. And, uh, I guess it wasn't God's will. So finally, I lost that ad ad admission. The reason was that they said I, in a week, I didn't do CRK. Well, I don't go into the other stories because it might indict, indict one or two persons. That, that's where, where I'm here today. So, I kept on doing my job, enjoyed my sports, went to uh, Puga. I took the female soccer team and the male soccer team. I had my gold medal. It was, wow, this guy is good. And all the stories, all the accolades, and I kept growing. But someone told me, no matter what you do, no matter how good you are, if you don't have a degree, you are wasting your time. And that sank right into my head. So, 2007, I picked an album. I wrote uh, GCE, just for that CROK. Other subject I wasn't serious about them. But I ended up passing all of them. Except music that was withheld till today. For a year, I didn't know what's wrong with them. So, I bought the form, got exam, see had the highest score in the Faculty of Arts. Then I was granted admission for the same theology that I ran away from. But God's time is the best and His purposes keep showing itself every now and then. So, 20, uh, 2007, I got admission to study theology. We were about um, 40 in the class, and I was made the class governor. Reason, I don't know. But I guess because I was also working in Babcock, so they felt I'll be able to speak with the lecturers whom I'm, I'm, I'm already close to. So we began the program, and then um, it was going well, first year. I got my result clean, of course. I was not keen uh, about first class. <laughs> because in the church, nobody will ask you on the pulpit, do you have a first class or not? You just keep preaching the Bible and then case close. So I was maintaining my, my grades perfectly well. So second semester of year one, I got to hear that there was a prof in the US. He is now late. Uh, Professor Nebel, who was given scholarship to uh, indigenous uh, students. So I made in inquiries, so I also applied. Being a self sponsored student, it's very difficult because you are working around the clock to make sure that um, you have what to take care of yourself with, you pay your fees, buy books, and look decent enough to be in class. So, when I, I wrote that letter of application and um, various things were required of me to submit. And I tried to source for those materials. My first year results, my baptismal certificate from the church, uh, recommendations from several quarters, and, which I did. I did. In every way that I was very active in church, I was in the church choir, I was in the university choir as an assistant director, I was doing very well, people knew me, and of course in church, I was fighting for the right. Uh, based on the standard of the church, there are certain things we don't compromise about, especially music. So I never knew that in my, in my, in my quest to to stand for the right things, especially in music, I was stepping on so many toes. <sighs> so, after all the interviews with uh, the liaison officer for late Professor Nigel, I was asked to bring a letter from the highest ranking officer of the religious body in school. 
So I went to him. I just saw, Pastor, this is why I'm here to see you. So he laughed. Then he said, Dennis, you see, you are not in my camp. You've been fighting my camp so much that we want to do this in church. You are among those who go and off the microphone. You don't support our quest to bring drums to church. You don't do this, you don't do that. I won't give you what you're looking for. Let that hell be let loose. At that point, I was sweating, I was catching cold. My legs were shivering. My head grew five times larger, but I was still my small statue. I begged, I begged, and I begged. He maintained his stand that uh, he would do any, anything about that. I left his office. I went and met uh, some persons who could help me speak with him and beg him. This is a young man who is self-sponsored, who needs all the finances to, uh, to pay his fees from someone who is willing to do that. But all efforts from people didn't work. And this was 2009. Before this time, I had taken one year off school to be able to raise funds. So because of this, the powers that be had stopped me from working in school because they felt, because I'm not in their camp, I can't be off school for one year and I'm still working. So between 2008, eight, eight, yes, I was not working, I wasn't in school. So how was I feeding myself? How was I paying my house rent? I was living alone. But God fed me. God provided all. So 2009, when all efforts to get his signature and a letter from him didn't, didn't prove uh, positive, uh, a lot of persons came to me and said, Ah, Dennis, you can't keep wasting in Bangkok. Uh, you must not school in Bangkok to be a graduate. There are, there are a few persons I will, I will mention their names. First, um, if you're angry with that, uh, I'm sorry, but um, this, this is my story, not yours. Professor Oyekachi Akba. He called me and said, Dennis, what is, is your next step? I said, Pastor, I don't know. He said, no, don't say you don't know. You're too smart to say that. Think. Say, Pastor, right now, I don't know. And while I was talking, I remember that tears rolled down my cheeks. Because I did not see the rationale behind a man of God sitting on the future of a young person. So, he said, I know that you're also good in music. Have you thought about another course that can take, take a, a degree in? So I'll pray about it. My answer was just to discharge him because I don't want any further query and so on. The other person is Pastor Omahi, now Professor Gaius Omahi. We're very close and he said, oh boy, you must not school in Bangkok to be a degree holder. Go outside there and do what to do. If God says you come to Bangkok and finish up, you come up. But for now, think. Next step. The next person is um, my then boss, uh, David Ayeni. In the midst of all this broha, he had called me once and said, Dennis, you have not been allowed to work because you're not in school. So what do you do? I said, look, I'll keep trying. He said, as fast as you can, 
think on what not to do. He didn't want to risk his own job to employ me. And, um, but whenever he had programs, he would invite me as an external official. And he would pay me on the area. So I said, okay. So 2009, I enrolled back to school for, second semester, for, first, for first semester, second year. With the hope and belief that God will um, provide the finance. So I remember in church one Sabbath day, Professor Banan called again and said, So what have you come up with? I said, Prof, nothing. He said, Okay. You will think about going to study music. Because I said, This is a calling. I smiled. I said, Pastor, music is just a, a hobby to me. I mean, I sing, I play, it's just a hobby to keep the body and soul together. He said, Yeah, you can make it to become. Yeah, professional. So I went home, talked with my friends, and they concurred and said, I bet that's your way now, that's a few. Why are you wasting time? <laughs> so, unceremoniously, unannounced, I didn't even tell my friends. I woke up on the, I think on the 12th of December. 2009, carried my small box, boarded a bus to Akwang State. They thought I was just going to come back after Christmas, but that was less stressful. I arrived that day, went home. My parents were welcoming my siblings. I was excited, but. When I had finished my story with them, they said, some said, I just wasted six years of my life. From 2003 to 2009. But for me, God, you see, God prepares a place for you using your trials. I got there. The two days after, a friend of mine called me and said, Dennis, are you in town? I said, yes. He said, please, come to our church. So I bought a bike, went to the Apostolic Church, Eket Field, Odafa Street. He said, the director of protocol for the governor called him and said, there is a program he would want his singing group to take part in. Please come to you that evening. With the group. Meanwhile, the group had ceased to exist. So he went now after since I'm into music, he said, Please help me, let's do this. You also go with us. So we put our head together and then we came up with five persons, two girls and three male. So on getting to Uyo, he was called, he said, go to 100 units. 100 unit is a large landmass of 100 uh, flats. So we got one of them where we asked to go to, and then surprisingly, we saw other persons there. We were like, what happened? We're now told by him around 7 o'clock that the state is raising a choir that will represent the state in Asso Rock Christmas Festival the following day in Abuja. Now, I am not an indigent of Akwam State. So I knew that my chances of making that team was very slim. So I told God, if you want me to go here, yeah, make a way. So one or two persons that knew me said, ah, guy, let's, let's help making this thing work. So I, I became a frontliner in teaching the songs that we agreed on. And um, the following day was a, a Tuesday. I think. So we had to go back to our different station to go and prepare to come back that evening for the flight to Abuja. So I called my brother, I said, please prepare my white shirt, my ash colored trouser, my black shoe, and two other shirts. Oh. So while we were going to the airport, the political officer said, uh, young man, I understand you sing very well. Prepare 
a song, a solo that you sing before the state choir will sing. And I was like, Sir, I didn't get it clearly. He said, My friend, don't be funny. I said, Prepare a song, look for a good song that you sing before the state choir will sing. I said, Okay, sir. So I called my, my brother. I said, please go to my laptop. You see uh, my soundtracks. Look for Oh, oh, oh Holy Night by Sandy Party. The one that has uh, a lower key. Please send it to me via Togo. <laughs> Togo was the then uh, source for communication. So, so he sent it. And I, I got there, did the small practice, and with that small effort, God bless it. Meanwhile, a day before, I had a dream that I sang at Asura in the place of governors and so on. I told my mom, I was like, okay, well, whatever it is, go, go make it to work. I told my dad, he said, your mom, you have malaria, go and do for malaria. <laughs> so, now when this happened, they were like, wow. So we went to Asso Rock, came back, and uh, the rest is story. I, I did that for three years of the stretch. Uh, I would say that I'm the first Sound Adventist to have performed in Asso Rock Villa for a program. I stand to be corrected. So fast forward the years, 2010, I got formed for Jam, wrote Jam, got admission to study music in University of Uyo. 11, 12, 13. Okay, 2010, I was also el elected as the music director for NAS National. 10 to 12. Then at 2012, I was elected president of NAS National. 2015, I finished my program. Between 2010 and 2014, I had traveled out of the country two or three times for music competitions. And each time I was going, to Lagos or for the programs outside, I would always branch Babcock, at least where I knew and I see her friends, to see one or two persons and then ask questions about the music program that was being proposed. So, after my program in Uyo, 2015, I, I made some calls and I came to Babcock to visit, but this time I came with uh, my CV. Now I'm a, I'm a music graduate. So when I came in, I met Pastor Akbar, I met uh, Pastor Mahi, I told them, well, by God's grace, I'm doing my, my program. And they were so excited. You know, when, when you see people, one or two persons who can inspire you to look beyond your immediate environment, your immediate situation, to focus forward, they were, they were so excited. So I applied to work in Babcock with all the games, whatever it was. Then, uh, finally, 15th of September, 2015, I resumed as not, not a part-time worker or staff, but as a full time in, uh, worker in Babcock. Wow. And from then on, I, I recall that on one of those occasions, the same person who had denied me that letter years back, we sat in the same committee to vote result of students. When he saw me in the boardroom, he didn't, didn't know what to, to say. And I know I saw him asking some questions from the person who was close by him. And I guess he was asking, is Dennis a staff now or what? So when I was introduced, that um, a, a start with Babcock with the music department. It, it was like, the devil has come back again the second time. How on earth did he make it here again? But, you know, my people will say that no matter how you press down smoke, it will find its way out. So friends, if with all this downsides that I experience in life. Today, by God's grace, I'm doing my PhD in music. Wow. 
whatever you are passing through, friends, look beyond that. Dream. Dream above where you are. And with hard work, hard work, with perseverance, with dedication, God will take you to a place where you have to be. And like someone said uh, three weeks ago, that when I left the ministry as a pastor, that I didn't know that God was giving me a larger church to pastor as a musicologist. And today I will say that um, it's true. It was all over the country. I've been called, I've been consulted on music business, on issues of music in church, for concerts and so on. It was not done by my power. No matter how fluent I am in speaking, no matter how, or uh, whatever I will say, I don't know. But because I put my trust in God and he directed my path. So, my message to you today, friend, is whatever you are facing, put your trust in God and he will direct path. Finally, if a door doesn't look visible, please leave that A door and go to B. Sometimes we want to kill ourselves in entering through that door A. Meanwhile, there are other opportunities for you to go through and see go out. If you've been in one place for so long a time to acquire something, and it isn't coming forth. Don't waste time. Supposing I had insisted that I must go to school in Babcock. By now, about 15 years later, I was even here without any degree. But I listened to the uh, voice of reasoning from wise counsel and came out today. So, be inspired for greatness, be inspired for great things, be inspired to inspire others. This is my story. This is my song. Thank you. Mm -hmm.